All right. Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Friday, June the 7th, and we're coming off another beautiful night in the sports betting market. As you can see, I'm so hyped for today. I'm so hyped for the weekend. And they're only so far just talking. So please, if you guys want to do me a solid because the, the support I've been getting here on YouTube continues to hype me. Please, go down there. Smash that like button for me. Just do me that solid. It takes you one second to go click. That's it. Share it. Comment. Ask a question. Help me with the algorithm. Feed me that motivation and the more gold I want to give you. Seriously, I'm seeing that that a lot of you guys are absorbing the content, not just the free picks, but absorbing the content. And that motivates me more than anything else. Kind of like my, my steam room, which I have today and where I'm able to go in there and actually in detail talk about how we're betting our bank rolls, answering every question. I do the best I can here and your support's been amazing. So please, 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 Continue and I will continue. You really want to do me a solid. Head on over to my Instagram at Greek underscore gambler. Head on over to my TikTok at Greek underscore gambler seven and lay in some comments there, especially where they don't know me. There's a lot of nonsense there, a lot of bashing, a lot of guys that just don't know what Ace has done over the last two decades here. Talk about all this hype. Say, ah, he's a drugs on drug cocaine, crystal, crystal, crystal. If I look like the kind of guy that cops his drugs at a trailer park, seriously, Crystal? Anyway, I don't even drink these days. I'm just, I love my, I love life. It's a great thing. You wake up, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm also, a, a, well, I'm pretty tight to, to begin with. But as far as the, the, the drugs to get me going, I don't need them. I'm not saying I never did them, but I came here 26, 25 years old with no responsibilities in Las Vegas at a time when drugs were good for you and sex was safe. So I'm not saying I didn't have my good times. We could do a video on that. But they're on the, I, I haven't been in the same room with those kind of hard drugs in 25 years. got to be. It's got to be. You know, a little weed ain't going to hurt nobody as long as it's just to enhance, enhance, enhance an experience. You can't, you can't let it kill your motivation or become a daily thing. Anything like that. Again, I, Ace, let's not go off on that. The people are here for some winners. So I need to give you that because we've been on fire. Let's see how we've been doing. Last three days, that's a small sample size. If I was a tell, I'd be pushing 20% ROI, 26 and a half units on 48 bets. Wow, amazing. What about the last 30 days? Last 30 days, a little bigger sample size. Almost 30 units of profit. 3% ROI, 350 bets almost. Woo, all right. All right, the grind's there. It's paying off. It's paying off. And if you've managed risk correctly, you feel like I do this morning. Now, what matters more is how we're doing this year. Five months in the books, one week in June in the books. Woo, we're near that 70 unit mark. 2% ROI. I can do that all day. I can do that all day. On 1,300 plus bets, I could sustain that easily, easily. I haven't even gotten hot. I haven't even, we haven't even gotten lucky. Now, what does 70 units mean? It means we're 10 units shy of increasing our capital for the year by 20%. That's right. Not even halfway through the year. And give me 10 more units. Boston's going to give us five when they win this uh, NBA championship. And I know the guys that followed me and signed up January 1st, gave them that $1,000 off so that their cost is as low as possible. So that way their return is as high as possible. If you're going to join me, you got to do it for the long term. You ain't gonna, if you need to win tonight, this week, this month to pay stuff, again, you're doing it incorrectly. If you're looking to put your capital and invest it in something that's going to give you a higher return than so many other things, that's why I'm doing it. Um, believe me, you're in the right place. Head on over to Wager Talk, baby. Head him over to Wager Talk. Tell me sent you. Now, last but not least, what matters more than anything else, how are we doing the last 365? All right, staying above that two, 200 unit mark, staying above that 2% ROI on over 
3,300 bets. Wow. All right. This goes, numbers don't lie. You don't have to like the smile. You don't like have to like the voice. You don't have to like how handsome I am. You don't even have to like this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing today. But, but numbers do not lie. And if you can be honest with yourself, then you know you're in the right spot because we're here to do damage, damage, damage. Now, go down there, smash that like button because I love you. I love you and show some, some love back to Ace because he's going to give you some winners right here. I, I placed over 20 pieces already for the groups I work with. That's why I'm getting this out to you as quickly as possible. I didn't even go downstairs to get the hat. So forgive the look. There's just no time to waste. There's no time to waste. It's Friday. Time is money. Let's get to some action. We're coming off a nice night in Major League Baseball. I now am, let's see, got to give the, the long-term results in Major League Baseball because I'm going to give you some plays there. And you got to know, is Ace uh, plus EB or is Ace not plus EB? Well, over the last 365 days, number one in profit at Wager Talk, up over 125 units of profit, over a 4% ROI. And that's on over a thousand Major League Baseball bets. You're in the right place. Let me repeat that. Over the last 365 days, I've released a th over a thousand Major League Baseball bets. I have an ROI of over 4.2 and picked up over 125 units of profit. Let's get to some baseball winners for tonight. None bigger than I love than Tampa Bay. I am all over the Rays tonight. Gave them as a 4% play on the money line and then bet them also first five and took them at plus half a run, minus 150. Now, I don't know if you're going to get plus a half a run anymore because we, when we bet them, they were even a slight dog on the money line. So we paid juice to get that plus half a run. Those that can't get it, obviously, if you agree with me, then you just put a little more on the money line in the first five. If you disagree, I got you a better number. Um, that's the bottom line. I think they get past this Baltimore team this year. That's this tonight. That's playing a little above expectations. That's for sure. And I think the perfect storm because, uh, Tampa Bay's playing below those expectations. You know, that Pythagorean style we look at. So we're going to take Tampa Bay as a premium play today. You know what? I'm going to give you one more premium play as well. This one's going to be an underdog. Let's go. Let me find that underdog winner for you. Yeah, let's go home, dog. That's been good to us. L.A. Angels. L.A. Angels. Another situation where this plus money is too good to give up. Plus 150 or better, you got to get down. We got down on the first five. Money line also took the plus half a run up to minus 115, I believe. Let me give that to you just to be sure exactly what I gave subscribers. LA Angels plus 153%. LA Angels first five plus 142, 2%. LA Angels plus a half minus 105, 2%. Tampa Bay minus 110, 4%. Tampa Bay minus 113, first five, 2%. And Tampa Bay plus a half minus 150, first five, 2%. Now, you know, I don't bet 2%. I don't bet 4%. I don't bet 5%. Those are ratings. I bet 0.25. Why? Because I manage my risk correctly to keep my risk of ruin as low as I possibly can based on my bankroll. So I'm able to survive any negative fluctuation without even having to re-up my bankroll. That's the goal. That way we never get emotional. No day, week, or month is going to make us or break us. We know as long as we rinse and repeat, when all the dust settles, we will have placed about 3,000 plus bets and we're going to have beaten the books and turned a nice profit like we did last year, like we've done eight of the last nine, and it's going to be nine of the last 10. December 31st is going to be here before we know it, and uh, we'll be celebrating it. Now, let me give you some other action too. Yeah, I love you guys. Here's some baseball that um, looking at these numbers, they're not available. These are leans. So if you follow, fade, or ignore, not premium plays, just want to share some information. Looking for 963 Seattle minus 120, 973 Dodgers minus 125, 976 Miami plus 110, 962 White Sox even money, 
953, Cubs plus 125. I don't think those numbers will become available. If they do, we'll probably look to take advantage. WNBA, I gave out Phoenix plus six as a 3% play. That's Phoenix plus six as a 3% play. Also in that uh, UFL or whatever it's called, Saskatchewan, I think I gave you guys that earlier in the week. Saskatchewan plus two and a half was the side. Um, Line moved quickly. I wasn't going to give it to my guys at one and a half or one. Uh, Again, we're in no rush to take bad numbers. Uh, We could sit back and wait for the best bets. There's always going to be more numbers to find an inefficiency in. Why would I take a bad number? Don't do that. You'll make a lot of money. All right. I thought I didn't hit record. I saw blue instead of red. And I'm like, are you serious? You just shared all that info. You're going to have to do this again. All right. Let me give you some more stuff that the bot sent out. All right. USL championship. The USL championship. That's soccer. Phoenix versus Orange County. Phoenix versus Orange County. Went under two and a half. Under two and a half. Minus 125. I didn't give that out to subscribers. Because I know not everyone's going to be able to get down or find that. And if they do, the number's probably going to have moved a little bit. And I don't want my guys tempted to take bad numbers. I don't even want them tempted. So I protect them from themselves. Because like I tell my steam room, I would not have done this if I didn't feel extremely confident I'm going to turn a profit for you year in and year out. I didn't need to. If I wanted to tell, I could sell more, outsell anybody if I push. That's not what I wanted to do. And fortunately, Wager Talk set me up the way I wanted with a subscription where I'm accountable, where I have to go in and face my subscribers who trust me with their hard-earned money week in, week out. There's been times we were down for the year. I didn't hide. I didn't sugarcoat it. I went in there and I faced them and I urged them to do the right thing, just like I urge them to do the right thing when we're on a hot streak, instead of overbetting and thinking this is easy. So please, I say this from the heart. I want these free picks to to help benefit you, not to hurt you. And to do that, manage your risk correctly. What I give you as premium plays, they're going to turn a profit long-term. That's what I'm betting. That's what I release to my guys. So as long as you have a big enough sample size, You'll make money betting these if you don't burn through your bankroll in a short term. So if you're betting 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, 1%, 1.25 based on a 1% to 5%, 0.25% of those. Remember, 1% to 5% is the rating. We go 0.25% of those for our actual bet. If you do that with the premiums that I'm giving for free on this video every single day, what's today? June 7th? Perfect. My birthday's coming up in a week from now, June 12th. Same as Frank Rosenthal. What a coincidence. That, his book actually motivated me to come to Vegas. I'll tell you, I, a lot of you know that story. I've, I've, I've said it a hundred times. But reading his story actually changed my decision from going back to Philly when I was living in, in, in Greece to come into actual Las Vegas. And then I find out we have the same exact birthday. But the reason I bring that up is We'll check next year on my birthday. And if you mark down all these premium plays, somebody do the spreadsheet, please do it. I urge you to do it. You could save this part of this video too. It will be profitable. It will be profitable because I'm sharing gold because that's what you guys deserve. So take the USL Phoenix Orange County under if you like it. And then FIFA World Cup qualifiers, CONCAC. You know, C O N C A C A F, that's that bat league, whatever it is. Bahamas and Trinidad Tobago under three and a half. Bahamas, Trinidad Tobago <clears throat> under three and a half. Betted at minus 125, betted at minus 130. Um, I don't even know where it sits right now. I just try to share with you as much information as possible. It was funny also, real quickly, last night I got a, a money line move on it overnight on the LA Sparks. I didn't bet it. A lot of times I know what's going on with these overnights. Um, this morning, what do I get? Uh, move on Dallas minus two and a half. Like raise 
check Rays, check Rays Dallas. I don't have a dog in the fight with my subscribers. Obviously, I, I move with the accounts. Oh, I was hoping something good was coming in while you guys were here live. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, I got to get the question. Sorry. See, I'm so excited. Every night's Friday night in Vegas. I shouldn't be excited that it's Friday. All right, we got some questions. I love the questions because now I don't look at them till I'm here. I freestyle this. I don't prepare for it because I, I want it to be like the trading room floor, just like the steam room. All right. Where's the golf gold? Would love to hear some future tickets. The accounts want filled. Michael, I'd love to share some golf gold. I just haven't seen any in the accounts. If I do, number one, I, I know we've crushed golf historically. So I would like to release them to subscribers. It's always matchups. It's almost never to win a tournament. Almost never. It's always matchups for the tournament. And then throughout the tournament, I'll get second round, third round, fourth round. Those I usually don't release to subscribers because those move a little more quicker than um, the tournament ones only because um, they're, the limits are lower and it's more sharp money. And most recreational bettors, they're unloading before the tournament starts. But if I get any, I promise I'll share. I just don't handicap golf myself. I don't, I don't try to, to, to beat markets that I don't feel confident I, I could beat, that I've beaten, that I'm beating. That's just keeping it real. And golf's one of those where fortunately I have one of the sharpest uh, sources of information and I've just been piggybacking. Um, luckily, even when I take 10 cents worse, I've done very well, very well over the last decade. Uh, Christian, Christian Rome, Christian Rome. In the example today with aces, would you sit out the rest of the shore? Just bet minimum until the next shuffle. Great, 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 great question. I would stay. I would stay only because at the end of that, we were only at minus one. Now, I would factor in for aces and side. I side count my aces. So I would add to that minus one. We're in the negative for sure. But that wouldn't necessarily make me um, walk away. But I do use that tactic. In fact, I use it a lot. If we, I play double deck. I, I almost exclusively play double deck these days. And when we start off and we're maybe one deck, three fourths of one deck in, and it's a high negative, I'm acting like I got to get on my phone. I'm acting like I got to go to the bathroom and I'm just want out of that. I don't want to play those negative hands. That's why the, the, the downside of blackjack, and that's why team play is so advantageous because you don't have to go, like you, you, you have someone there just playing the minimum always through those negatives, and then you could have the whales come in and unload when it's a high count just. When we play blackjack, we got to more or less play a lot of negative hands where you know the house has the edge. And all you can do is bet the minimum, bet the minimum, bet the minimum, or back out, back out. Great question. Great question. And it's also how I'm running, how, you know, I feel it's going. Like, again, I know I'm going to be forced to play the negative hands. It's just how negative is this shoe and where am I in the count? Because a lot of time, even with deviation, just because it's negative doesn't mean you're going to lose especially if you know how to uh, uh, deviate from basic strategy, you could take advantage of knowing there's a lot more low cards. Again, you know you're at a disadvantage overall, but at least you limit the house edge by knowing when to deviate at least from basic strategy based on the negative count. So again, not to go long, I, I do opt out in that spot. I wouldn't have opt out only because it was the first hand. I would have just accounted for the aces because the next two hands could have been nothing but low cards. And now we're in the plus. Sure, I'm not getting blackjacks, but I still now have the advantage over the house. So great question. Great question. And of course, take that break. Act like your phone ringing, like you got to text somebody, like you got to use the bathroom, anything, anything. Going to get a drink of water. That waitress is taking forever. You know how it rolls. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome for the under in game one and the Pirates gold, my man. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Be, regarding the blackjack strategy, after a couple of hands, if the shoot starts with minus 20, why would you get up and leave? Also, if your minimum bet is 
what at plus number would you increase your betting size by how much? Six deck shoot. Uh, Therawada Hottie, six, two, three, one. To play six decks, you need to be able to spread one X to 20 X. That needs to be your bet spread, one X to 20 X. So if you're playing $10 a hand, you need to be able to go from $10 to 200 to make the game worth it. So that's number one. You got to be able to get away with that or else it's not worth it. Um, if it starts with 20, why wouldn't you get up minus 20? Why wouldn't I get up and leave? Because with six decks, it's not minus 20. It's about a minus three. I'd have to, if it's the first hand in the, in the shoe and it just happens to be all face cards, we're playing six decks. So I have to account what's in the discard trade, almost nothing. So I'm going to divide that minus 20 by six decks. And I'm only at what? 3.25 minus 3.25. That's nothing. That's not enough for me to get up and leave the table. Um, six deck. Remember, you're asking about six decks. Even if three aces go by with six decks, there's 21 more aces left. They could be coming up in the next batch. Like that's the thing, the difference with six decks and, and um, uh, double deck. And finally, it also, if your minimum best ten dollars, at what plus would I increase? Plus plus one, a true plus one, true plus one. I increase, true plus one. I increase, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and everything above that is the same. Pretty much any. I go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten and above. So I only have three or four um, big bet sizes I'm going to make. All right, Jason, Jason Baumgarten, my man. I had 50% bonus bet from an online today. I do this often and get more or less voice. For example, the Mavs, Mavs were plus six and a half, but I took the line up the Mavs plus 11 and a half minus 140 was minus 110. Is this a good strategy? Yeah, I mean, listen, <clears throat> you're getting a, a, a line at minus 140. That true line is minus 210. It's a good bet. It's a great bet, regardless what side you like. Um, anytime it's, and getting the, the, the bonus. I mean, those are plus EV all day. So good for you, regardless of outcome. Again, don't base, don't base whether it was a good bet on the outcome just because it won or just because it lost based on the fact I laid 140. I know the true odds are 210. I got the best of it. What's going to happen. There's going to be randomness. A, a ref could blow a call. Star player could get injured. Anything can happen. That, that's the randomness of a single game. But you keep laying those 150s when it should be 210. Rest assured, you're going to be holding the bag. <laughs> All right. Ryan Kozlowski. And if you guys don't want me using names, just let me know. It's just my way of, of appreciating you. Ace, how much does your bankroll have to increase from your original investment before you increase the amount of your unit size? Great question. Great question, Ryan. When I first started building my bankroll. I was so afraid of losing it. Having lost so many bankrolls, I didn't adjust until I doubled it or the year was over. Saw the profits and now I have a new, new bankroll. Let me just see, make sure that something didn't come in for us. Oh, this is a breakfast meeting on Tuesday morning. There uh, may be announcements coming soon. A, a, exciting stuff, exciting stuff ahead. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so that's what I was doing because I, I, I didn't want to increase my risk. I, I was so focused and my OCD, I was so zoned in to doing it the right way that I'm not going to lose this time. I'm going to do it exactly how I should going from 100 to 500. And that worked for me to get the 1000 to 5,000. It took a while, but I got there. Um, now, what I tell my subscribers, if you're able to replenish bankroll, meaning if you have a full-time job, that you have some savings, something like that, and your, your risk tolerance is a little bit greater, I'd increase at the 50% mark. Once, if we increase our bankroll by 50%, wait a week or two, see that we consolidate. Not that, you know, we went, if we go up in a straight line, then it's a different story. But if we're grinding up, the 50%, then we, we don't expect uh, a, a reversion to the mean. In that case, I would see a week or two that we are just consolidating, or even if we are going up and bet size based on that new bank roll, either positive or on the negative side. That's what I urge the steam room guys.
to do these days. And the reason I do that is because before starting the steam room, we went back through nine years of results and I didn't want to launch that program until I sat down with Johnny and we did all the math and made sure well, this is the program. If they would have followed this program from when I went to uh, wager talk, this is what would have happened. No one would have had to come out of pocket and replenish. No one would have like once we got it down to that science and had such a huge sample size, over 25,000 bets, <laughs> if you can believe that, um, it, it, then it, it became so obvious what to do. So obvious what to do. Um, so even at, at, at 50%, you can increase it. All right. Just two more questions. Two more questions. User CV2J. Uh, my, my, my man's using code. All right. Yanni, I posted if you ever knew or met Jimmy the Greek Snyder. Now I, I know someone asked you if you're related to Jimmy. Maybe he was joking, but I'm curious if you knew him. I'm old timer, but a big Jimmy fan. I'm a huge fan of Jimmy the Greek too. I actually am old enough where I watched him on the NFL show back then. And I was already into gambling. So I, I would watch the Greek segment. How crazy is that? I am not related to him. I've never met him. I actually, though, did uh, an interview with a show that was doing a, a, a expose on him or, or something like that. And because I'm Greek, he's actually Jewish and Greek, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, what a story. What a story. He's an Ohio guy. And uh, nah, I, I wish, I wish, I wish. Uh, him and Rosenthal. As Rosenthal is the one guy I wish I, I, I would have just been a cup of coffee. I'd have spent, forget about it. I forget about it, just to meet that man. All right. Neil, Neil, Neil Siri, let's go. Let's say you release 20 premium plays on any given day. Fully realize the great majority of your clients are not handicappers and therefore rely on you to provide winners. Okay, that's what we want. Some guys are going to handicap. Some guys are not. I, that's, a, that's very well put. Therefore, wouldn't you agree that it's foolish for your clients to pick and choose which of those 20 selections to bet? No, no, no. Not foolish at all. Not a 3% play is a 3% play. It's plus EV. You're just going to get to the long term. It's going to take you longer to realize the long term results. You guys are putting in the same plays. They're just putting in more of them. That's the difference. So if 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 the line moves on ten of them, it would be full. Let's like say you're you're working and you just don't get to the computer fast enough, and ten of the twenty selections have moved significantly. I would urge you to only take those 10. Sure, the long-term results aren't going to be identical if you're taking less of them, but you're still betting plus EV spots. So the only difference is it's going to take you longer to get to 3,000 bets, to get to 5,000 bets. But our, your ROI is going to be the same. Your, your return on capital is what's going to differ because you're not going to put as much volume in, but the EV we're betting 3%, 4%, 5%, 1%, 2% based on the implied win probability and the true win probability, what that difference is. So you could just bet one of them every day and you're placing a plus EV bet. The only difference is that over 10 bets, it's random over 50 bets. It's still going to be random. I could be 25 and 25 and you're down big. That doesn't make me mean what my long-term results are going to be. We, we know what they're going to be over 3,000 bets, over 25,000 bets. Why? Because I have that, at least in the past. Past don't guarantee future, but it puts you at least as a heavy favorite to be able to repeat it, especially if you're doing it year after year. So that's the only difference that it may take you, if you're betting one play a day, so you know you're going to bet 300 in a year. It's going to take you 10 years to get one year of our results. But if that's all the bankroll you have, then that's how you should do it. Instead of over betting and mismanaging, you're still betting plus EV. That's the key. Place a plus EV bet. It's like if we do the quarter where I give you a dollar fifty heads, I, you only got to give me a dollar tails. If we only flip it once with you, but I flip it ten times with your buddy. He's gonna, you're, he's gonna take my money faster than you. You're still gonna take my money. You're just gonna take it slower. He's just gonna take it faster because I'm flipping ten times a day with him. I'm flipping once a day with you. So it may go a week and you're six and one and I win. The chances of 
after 70 flips, him being 60 and 10 are really, really slim. See how that works out? So that's the key. The key is finding plus EV better uh, information. Once you have that, you can use it how you wish. And you should use it the right way based on your bankroll. I went too long for Friday, but I love you guys. I love you guys. And I appreciate you. We'll get this out as quickly as possible. Damn, it's almost 1 p.m. Eastern now. That's that's not my fault. I try to give you as much gold as possible. I just love hanging out, man. So uh, have a good Friday night. Be safe. Be safe because I got a big Saturday coming for you. Got UFC tomorrow as well.